you too. Get along. All right, she's an early start today. I have to leave. I can hear them already. Good morning. I think it's Wednesday. Part of my life is spent at meetings because I sit on a board and uh, I missed December's board meeting because of the barn roof. So I missed that meeting. I have to get really caught up on my minutes and all the things that I kind of missed in the last month because I've literally hibernated in this barn. Mark and I were thinking too, he has meetings in Guelph as well on Thursday. So we were wondering, we have a gift certificate to go to Niagara Falls and we haven't used it and we got it two years ago. <laughs> I told him yesterday, we can call it our har harvest honeymoon because we've done nothing since basically, oh, I don't even remember the last time we've gone away if it wasn't just something business related. It is a really nice morning. Every day the barn gets just a little bit drier, so when it's under three degrees, the barn is good. As soon as it goes over three degrees, the barn will get wet. Hi guys. Look at this one. <laughs> Having a good siesta. The bottle babies look good. Ooh. All right, let's get to work. I only have about two and a half hours to do everything. I'm gonna feed, I'm gonna bed, I'm gonna clean out the milk machine, and then get everything prepped across the road, bring in some more straw bales, get a hay bale started. And then I think we should be, we're in a pretty good, if there's any time to go away, it's kind of that week or two after lambing is completed and you've got your barn set up and organized. That makes it pretty easy for someone just to take over. Really, if it's just doing chores, she really only has to feed in bed and keep an eye on these lambs and then whatever else I get her to kind of check. It takes a bit longer when I do it just because I'm trying to observe and trying to fix stuff that I break and I can always fill a day. I, I'm sure most people can relate. It's Friday. I got home later yesterday afternoon to winter. So snow, it's not looking like we're going away tomorrow because they're calling for a blizzard. <laughs> this is what happens when Mark and I try to make plans. I was not gonna pick up my camera today, but um, I walked into the barn. I'm gonna show you what I just saw. So, <laughs> I texted Mark and said, what, what the heck? And he's like, did you not see my YouTube video? So as you can see from the video, it's a mess. I don't think the hose has been off too long, but basically one of the hoses came off and spilt a whole bunch of milk all over the floor that I'm trying to clean up. So right now it's kind of wet in there. I'm gonna have to put a hole in the floor. Uh, Sandy's gone to a meeting today and tomorrow, so I'm in charge of everything. So I'm gonna fix it the way I would fix it because she's not here to tell me anything different. So I'm gonna drill a hole in the floor, basically kind of clean out all the milk inside there, put a little chunk of wood over top of the hole so the cold air doesn't get in. Let this soak up overnight in the morning. I'll clean up all the straw I put down to soak up the milk because it's uh, kind of a mess and it's gonna stink really bad. So I just checked out his YouTube video. I try to do all the things before I leave in a hurry. So I, I serviced this whole machine before I left. I cleaned out all the hoses. I re-insulated everything because I knew today was supposed to be cold. Um, and I thought we were going away. 
like today and tomorrow, so I want to get it all ready for Jess. I think when I was putting on the insulation, I must have pulled enough. I'll show you here. I must have just nudged it enough that this had come out just enough that with enough pulling off the lambs, it came out. We lost a whole bag of milk replacer I had just put in a brand new bag. The only reason he caught it is because Jamie, my feed guy, wanted to come in and check out the lambs. So if he hadn't come in here, Mark wouldn't have caught it and this would have been flooded because this float, the float in there would have run all night. It would have been out of milk replacer, but uh, it, I would have had flood number three in one week and that would have been bad. However, this is bad enough because if anyone knows what milk that doesn't get cleaned up smells like, if this barn warms up, which it won't do today, it's gonna stink. I also decided today that it's gonna be weaning day for my first bottle babies. Part of the reason is because their nipple froze. They've probably gone the last couple hours without milk. They're not crying. So to me that means they're probably, they're eating all their creep every single day. Their creep is empty. So that means they're on feed good and they're drinking water. I usually wean my bottle babies around 35 to 40 days. And these guys were born the week between December 7th and December 12th. So other than that today, it's just gonna be chores and whatever else pops up because it's winter all of a sudden. creep over here in this bin in the corner. Now this is still left over from my last group but I've been having to keep an eye because they eat fast. I've got feed ordered for Monday and it's looking like it's looking like Monday is uh, gonna be just nip and tuck. This bin is only a two-ton bin and that's a minimum order so if I get them to come and it's like up to here then it's gonna blow out the top so it's kind of a guess kind of a guessing game but I figured Worst case scenario, if there's a little bit left, I can just fill up pails and be ready for the feed truck. I need your help. I just finished up uh, all the chores, all the things that doesn't really get done when you're away. I need your advice. Okay, so say your business partner is also your spouse or your, your loving significant other and that partner is in charge of whatever it is when you're gone. So say your main responsibility is, you know, for the most part, you're the one that organizes the kids or the goldfish or the dog or the cat. Whatever it may be. So that person in charge, and you come home, and you notice that some of the jobs aren't quite done, or at least you have a feeling they weren't done quite according to instruction. Do you call them on it, and probably cause a fight, or do you keep your mouth shut, be happy that everyone's alive and happy and fed, and just move on with your day. What 2019 Sandy would do, she would uh, call him on it, not think about it. Just like say, did, did you do this, this, and this? Even though I, I know he probably didn't. But 2020 Sandy will just be passive aggressive, put it on YouTube, and wait for him to find it. Everything is done, and I would imagine his answer would be, I didn't have time because I was rushing. Your machine leaked milk all over, causing a Milky Way. Or the last thing he would just be like, sounds like you should just always do it and not ask me to do it. <laughs> However, we have yet another dilemma of the day. So now I have to figure out where to find some mouse sticky traps, and I'll tell you why. See if you can see this. I have a bird problem. You can hear them, but they like to lay 
They like to make a nest in my, in my chain. So I have to climb up there, pull out the straw because I think it's messed up with my limit switch up there. So what I do is I grab uh, some sticky mouse traps and I, and I kind of bait them all over. And because it's shiny and sticky, they don't lay in there. It just, over time, the sticky becomes dusty and then they know that they can start building a nest again. Okay, so this is what I'm dealing with here. Whole bunch of straw up in the chain, down in that chain. So this is where I usually put the mouse traps, but as you can see, there's straw on it, so that's not doing anything to deter them. So I have to get some new ones and replace them and try to get this cleaned up. Okay, so we got it cleaned out, I think, for the most part. Um, but I'm still not loving the way this thing, I hope no one's afraid of heights because this is what I'm dealing with. It's a long way down. Okay, yeah, so that's, a, that's as good as I can do. I'm gonna put a new, a new uh, sticky trap down there, and then where else, wherever else I can do it, that I can attach it somehow. So I'm gonna do that now. So I had a pretty productive lunch hour. I called the garage door opener. So he's coming Tuesday or Wednesday, I think next week. And I ran into town. I tried to find more sticky traps. So these are those mouse sticky traps. Um, but as you can see, it's full of non-sticky stuff. So uh, all they had were like fly traps, sticky fly traps. So I'm gonna see if I can stick the sticky fly trap to the old thing. Um, and if that doesn't work, I'll have to find like a piece of board or something that this would stick to. Cause I don't think I have anything up there big enough to stick this to. Oh, there's a couple boards. I might be able to, I might be able to get creative. Oh, I think it might work. All right. Oh no, it's just got the one little stick. Oh, well, that's not gonna work at all. Okay, that's a bus. But I guess it's just a stick on a window. So that's my problem. It's only got this one little strip. So that's not gonna work. That was a bus. I have the silo bag tape, which is like the greatest tape ever. Strong. So let's see if I can make something work here. gonna work. This is too dirty. What if I use this side? Oh my God. This is not sticky at all. It's crap. I have an idea. I don't know if it'll work, but bear with me. If I did something like... that. Like on this side. And it's sticky on this side. Would that be better? I think that would work. I think that'll work. And then when I lift that up, it should be sticky. Yay, I figured it out. I grabbed a couple pieces of cardboard too. Uh, and I'm gonna do the same thing. And that'll be number two. We'll do one more. Ah. 
and I might even hang this just as a deterrent, but we'll see. So I got a sticky trap there, but I ran out of zip ties because I kept screwing up. So I have to go back down and get something to stick that. And I got my new one there. And what I found works better. So I might even just replace that one with more fly tape. Because that's super sticky and it sticks. I can put stick it anywhere. So I'm gonna just, I think I'm gonna lather everything with sti sticky tape up here. Okay, I have put sticky tape everywhere. There, there, any like surface that a bird can just nest her little butt. Um, now my fingers are like stuck together. However, I'm hoping this will work. This is kind of a cool picture of the uh, barn in the middle of the afternoon. Still gotta clean that up. All right. All right, you little birds. This is war. So we'll see if this works. I hope it does. <laughs> They're all sitting over there, all innocent. Mocking me. These birds and I have had words so many times because they have created me, they have created so much work with this garage door because they, well they nest everywhere but they love to nest right in the chain. They don't nest like, you know, anywhere where it won't hurt it but they nest right in that chain and the chain moves every day. So I don't understand why they nest where their nest gets destroyed every single day and then they keep rebuilding their nest. Is there any bird experts out there? Can you help me out? Why do they do that? I even put in like, I put like the scary owl. Where is it? Yeah, it's up there. Somewhere up there. And not scary. Not even, not even scary for one day. I had another, I had a couple more that I borrowed from my dairy farmer friend. No, they didn't do anything. I don't know how to get rid of birds in a barn. Those little mice baits. There is a 10 year old, I think from, I might screw up where he's from. Either Scotland or England, and I know that's bad to screw up those two, but from overseas. He messaged me like a year ago or a year and a half ago. His name is Michael, so shout out to Michael. And he was the one that suggested those, those mouse sticky traps. And I don't know what it is. I've never found a bird like dead, like stuck in a sticky trap, but I don't know, like birds aren't that smart, are they? That they know that it's sticky, but anyway. Once I, oh, when, when I have fresh ones up there, it's a year before I have to replace them. So that's a little hack for you guys. If you do have birds that are nesting, these sticky traps work. I don't know, I don't know why, but uh, that has been a lifesaver. All right, I'm just gonna check the flock. These guys have been nibbling at my brand new installation. I just redid this two days ago and they've already destroyed it. So I had to put another piece of wood here because they're getting their heads in here. They're just rats. Yeah, rats, they look good. So that one there limping with its foot up in the air. I, mean, I treated it, I started treating it Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It has got an abscess on its hoof. So I'm hoping uh, the penicillin will help kind of clear up that infection. Cause it's a nice, it's a nice little lamb. Can you believe how big these are already? I love showing you guys because you you were here when they were born. Some of these guys will be a month old. Yeah, because I moved into this pen around the 12th of December and we're already at the 17th of January. So the, yeah, these guys are already three to four weeks. They're getting big. Look how big you are. Hi, Mama. <laughs> 
That lady was born in 20... I bought her in 2012 and she was a yearling, so she was born in 2011. And my babies. This pen, as you remember, was born uh, Christmas Eve and on. So Christmas Eve till about January, whatever last Wednesday was. January 8th, maybe? Hi, Mama. You're so sweet. So sweet. All right, I'm gonna go see what Mark's doing.